This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1745. How to Lower Your Cholesterol, Prescription, Lifestyle Changes, and More by Stephanie Watson of Healthline.com, and I'm Dr. Neil. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, or welcome for the first time if you're new here. This is the podcast where I act as your very own personal narrator and read to you from some of the most popular health and fitness blogs online, and always with a bit of my commentary at the end. Now I'm gonna keep this intro nice and short, so let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. How to Lower Your Cholesterol, Prescription, Lifestyle Changes, and More by Stephanie Watson of Healthline.com. What is cholesterol? Cholesterol is a fatty, waxy substance in your blood. Some cholesterol comes from the foods you eat. Your body makes the rest. Cholesterol has a few useful purposes. Your body needs it to make hormones and healthy cells. Yet, having too much of the wrong type of cholesterol can cause health problems. Cholesterol is made in your liver. It has many important functions in the body, but it can cause health problems if not managed. You have two kinds of cholesterol in your body. Low-density lipoprotein, or LDL, is the unhealthy kind of cholesterol that clogs arteries. You want to keep your level below 100 milligrams per deciliter. And there's high-density lipoprotein, or HDL. This is the healthy kind that helps to clear LDL cholesterol out of your arteries. You want to aim for a level of 60 milligrams per deciliter, or higher. The problem with high cholesterol. When you have too much cholesterol in your blood, it begins to build up inside your blood vessels. These deposits are called plaques. They harden and narrow your arteries, allowing less blood to flow through them. Sometimes a plaque can break open, and a blood clot can form at the site of the injury. If that blood clot gets lodged in a coronary artery in your heart muscle, it can block blood flow and cause a heart attack. A blood clot can also travel to a blood vessel that feeds your brain. If it disrupts blood flow to your brain, it can cause a stroke. How to lower your cholesterol. The first approach to lowering cholesterol is with diet, exercise, and other lifestyle changes. Here are five tips to help you get started. One, adopt a new diet. Eating right is an important part of both lowering LDL cholesterol and raising HDL cholesterol. You'll want to avoid saturated and trans fats because they increase LDL cholesterol. You can find saturated fats in foods like red meat, processed meat such as hot dogs, bologna, and pepperoni, and full-fat dairy foods like ice cream, cream cheese, and whole milk. Trans fats are made through a process that uses hydrogen to turn liquid oil into solid fat. Manufacturers like trans fats because they help packaged foods stay fresh for longer but trans fats are unhealthy for your arteries. These unhealthy fats not only raise LDL cholesterol, but also lower HDL cholesterol. That's why you should avoid them entirely if possible. You'll find trans fats in foods such as fried foods, fast foods, and baked packaged goods like cookies, crackers, and cupcakes. Instead, get your fat from healthier, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated sources such as Fatty fish like salmon, tuna, trout, herring, and sardines. Olive, canola, safflower, sunflower, and grapeseed oils. Avocados. Nuts like walnuts and pecans. Seeds and soybeans. Although some cholesterol in your diet is fine, try not to overdo it. Limit foods like butter, cheese, lobster, egg yolks, and organ meats, which are all high in cholesterol. Also, Watch the amount of refined sugar and flour you eat. Stick with whole grains like whole wheat, brown rice, and oatmeal. Whole grains are also high in fiber, which helps to remove excess cholesterol from your body. Round out the rest of your cholesterol-lowering diet with plenty of colorful fruits and vegetables, and lean protein like skinless chicken, beans, and tofu. Two, exercise more. Fitness is essential for your overall health and well-being but it can also help boost your HDL cholesterol. Try to get 30 to 60 minutes of aerobic exercise on most days of the week. If you're strapped for time, break your workouts up into more manageable chunks. Walk for 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at lunchtime, and 10 minutes when you get home from work or school. Incorporate strength training with weights, 
exercise bands, or body weight resistance at least twice a week. Three, lose weight. Eating well and exercising more often will also help you trim down. If you're overweight or obese, a loss of just five to 10 pounds may be enough to improve your cholesterol level. Four, quit smoking. Smoking is a bad habit for many reasons. In addition to increasing your risk of cancer and lung disease, the chemicals in cigarette smoke damage your blood vessels and speed the buildup of plaques inside your arteries. Quitting smoking can be very challenging, but there are many resources available. Talk to your doctor about support groups or programs you can join for help. You can also get support through a phone app like QuitNet, which helps people trying to quit smoking connect with each other. And five, talk to your doctor about cholesterol-lowering drugs. If lifestyle changes aren't helping to lower your bad cholesterol enough, speak with your doctor about prescription drugs that may help. Some of these drugs lower LDL cholesterol, while others increase HDL cholesterol. A few do both. Statins. Statins block a substance your liver uses to make cholesterol. As a result, your liver pulls more cholesterol from your blood. Examples of statins include Lipitor, Lescol XL, Altoprev, Livolo, Prevacol, Crestor, and Zocor. Bile acid sequestrants. Bile acid sequestrants bind to bile acids, which are involved in digestion. Your liver makes bile acids using cholesterol. When bile acids aren't available, your liver has to pull extra cholesterol from your blood to make more. Examples of bile acid sequestrants include Prevolite, Wellcol, and Cholested. Cholesterol absorption inhibitors. Cholesterol absorption inhibitors prevent your intestines from absorbing as much cholesterol. Zetia is a drug in this class. Fibrates. Fibrates increase HDL cholesterol and lower triglycerides, another type of fat in your blood. Examples of fibrates include Atrimid S, Tricor, and Lopid. Niacin. Niacin is a B vitamin that can help raise HDL cholesterol. It's available in the brands Niacor and Niaspan. The takeaway. You can lower your bad cholesterol and raise your good cholesterol with a few simple lifestyle changes. This includes eating a healthy diet and getting regular exercise. If lifestyle changes aren't enough, speak with your doctor about prescription medications. You just listened to the post titled How to Lower Your Cholesterol, Prescription, Lifestyle Changes, and More by Stephanie Watson of Healthline.com. We're here to optimize our health. Now, listening to these articles is important, but getting personalized help can be a game changer. In the past, it's been difficult to get a clear picture of what our bodies look like on the inside or how to measure what choices are helping or hurting us. That's what Inside Tracker was designed to solve. Inside Tracker was founded in 2009 by leading scientists in aging, genetics, and biometrics from MIT, Tufts, and Harvard. Using their patented algorithm, Inside Tracker analyzes your body's data to provide you with a clear picture of what's going on inside you and to offer you science backed recommendations for positive diet and lifestyle changes. Then, Inside Tracker tracks your progress every day to help you reach your performance goals and live a longer, healthier life. Now, for a limited time, you can get 25% off the entire Inside Tracker store. Go to insidetracker.com/ohd to get your discount code and to start using Inside Tracker today. That's insidetracker.com/ohd for 25% off the entire Inside Tracker store. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. I often get asked What's the best way to raise my good cholesterol, the HDL cholesterol? Oh, by the way, if you get confused by which is the good cholesterol versus the bad, you're not alone. This happens all the time. A helpful way to remember the differences is to think about the H in HDL as happy or healthy cholesterol. This HDL or happy or healthy cholesterol is good for us because it helps the body get rid of the bad LDL cholesterol. Think of the L in LDL as lousy or lethal cholesterol. It's lousy and lethal because this is the stuff that clogs our arteries. Okay, so what are some of the ways to increase the happy or healthy HDL cholesterol? Studies have found that 
high intensity interval training is one of the best ways. Now, that doesn't mean we have to perform high intensity interval training every single day. Instead, try and incorporate it once or twice a week in place of your usual workouts. Oh, and another way to help increase the good cholesterol would be to increase your consumption of omega-3 fats specifically, like the article talked about. So the type of fats found in salmon, mackerel, halibut, herring, and trout, try to consume two to three servings of these types of fish each week. All right, that'll do it for today. I hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back here tomorrow as usual. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.